Last year's straw bale garden worked great. The bales still looked pretty good, and we figured we'd just move them off that raised bed to another place to grow this year. When I went to move the first bale, it was pretty falling apart. So we had to do something different. Stay tuned! Hi everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers and I'm doing a quick tour of our new recycled straw bale garden. <laughs> Does that make sense? Last year we had, we had used one of our large beds, we call it bed five because that's the number on the irrigation, and we turned it into a straw bale garden. Now, one of the reasons we did that was that bed is contaminated with various assortments of grubs. And we knew that we just, we were done with it. We, had to, we hadn't come up with a solution for the grub problem and we needed to grow things there. So we set up a straw bale garden on top of it, literally just plopped them there. Well, a year later, we want to go back, we found a solution, and we want to go back to using that spot as a regular bed. But what do you do with the straw bales? Well, if you watch CB at CB's Greenhouse and Garden, you'll know that what he does is he, he makes a container and he puts all the used straw, which is pretty rotted, more rotted there than it is here, but still pretty rotted by the end of the season. Now, we tried to see if we could move our straw bales. No, they were too crumbly. And the amount of work it would take to try and clamp each one together and move it, that was just obscene. So we decided we would do the same thing that CB does. We would create a freestanding bed, basically. So there is, and this is, this is a great way to show it here because we're in the process of gonna, we're gonna put another one up too. So that means you can actually see kind of some of the innards, some of the workings of it. So if we come up close, you can see that there's hardware cloth on the ground here, right there. And it goes about uh, six or eight inches past the bed and it's covered with a decent quality landscape fabric. I'm going to add another piece of hardware cloth over here and we're going to add another bed right where my shadow is <laughs> on the floor. Uh, and we'll cover the whole thing with landscape fabric to keep the weeds from coming up. This area over here has been a big weed problem for about three years. Uh, we magically had some really nasty, tenacious weeds show up in this area and no matter what we've done, it didn't, didn't. So we wind up spending the entire summer trying to kill the weeds over here. It's just, it's a pain in the patootie. It's worthless, it doesn't do anything. You don't sit over here, you don't, you don't get anything out of it except an occasional splinter or a sticker. So now we have a bed. Now, Henry knew basically what he wanted to do. He had the, I, these are pieces of, if you look in the corner here, you can see. There's pieces of rebar that are driven into the ground here. Then we needed a frame to go attached to that. What we weren't sure of initially was what we were going to use for the side, and that was my idea. When we bought this place, it had a building, which we call a studio now, but it had two roll-up doors on the front side of it, because apparently it was supposed to originally have been a garage, but at least one of those roll-up doors was actually nailed in place. I mean, it never didn't have runners or anything else. It was just nailed there to look like a roll-up door. So we have the pieces, and you'll see that's what this is. This is a roll-up door. It's a decent quality roll-up door. It's metal, it's not fiberglass. We just, you know, Henry got a drill and he made some braces. We took a couple of old pieces. This is actually an old piece of the skirting off of the mobile home. Uh, I don't know why they call them that because they're not mobile, but uh, <laughs> the mobile home that 
came with the property that we lived in for several years while we were building Ta -da! the house. Piece of skirting, a couple of old two by fours, some rebar, and we have a frame. Then Henry and I used the wheelbarrow to, and another cart that we have to haul lots and lots of rotten straw over here, and we put it in here. And over the last few days, I have banged on it, and Henry has banged on it, and I have watered it. And this morning, we put a couple of uh, bags of compost on top, and we're gonna call it good. We had hoped to plant right away. Of course, the weather is not cooperating, so we're gonna have to wait. We're hoping Wednesday or Thursday of this coming week we'll be able to plant this guy. These bales were used for growing tomatoes and peppers. So we figured we'd put cucumbers in here. So that's cucumbers, squash, all that kind of stuff. This bed will get a little bit of afternoon shade uh, for some brief period, but that's just fine because it, it gets bright sun most of the time. It's close to an irrigation spigot over here. So if we decide we want to run drip irrigation, I can easily run a main line off of here over to the bed and then just up the side and in. Uh, and that's probably what we'll do. But and anyway, this is our new toy. So we're very pleased with that. Hopefully in the next couple of days, we'll be able to work on that one too. And then this whole area will be covered. Um, I'm gonna see if I have enough of this gravel here to uh, cover it, because that would be a nice thing. I think I might, just barely. Um, that would provide continuity and I'll put down another, you know, we'll just create a continuous area here rather than having gaps where the weeds can come in. Not gonna worry about this too much back here. It never gets really, really bad usually. We can ignore that. <laughs> Sometimes you have to just say, I can ignore that. So that's an update on the new rotted straw bale beds. That'll take care of a lot of our problem child because this section over here where the two beds will be is the worst section in the yard practically in terms of weeds. Uh, it's got a lot of bindweed in it. And if you don't know what bindweed is, it's a wild morning glory. And one of the problems with morning glories in agricultural areas like New Mexico and Arizona is this stuff has become Roundup resistant. This is our solution. We're going to cover it up and hopefully try and make it go away. <laughs> Do I believe it will? No. Anyway, I hope you find this interesting and uh, be sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell because we're going to have all kinds of things like this going on this spring and summer. Lots of new spots in the yard where we're growing things and it'll be interesting to see how this stuff works. Um, CB has a great garden that he runs in rotted straw. Our straw is not as rotted as his is, but I'm pretty confident we've got uh, some decent sized plants to stick in here. They're not giant, but you know, they're not giant like my tomato plants are, but still they're, they're, they've already been potted up once as seedlings. If necessary, if I have to hold them longer because the weather's still too cold, I'll do it. We're really hoping that our cucumbers and other things can be happy in here. And you'll have to come back and see if it works. So until next time, have a great week, take care and bye.